Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the oil primary control and the CAD cell and their operation and also the troubleshooting. So this right here is going to control the operation of the oil burner and it needs two things right here. It needs to make sure that you don't already have a flame in the chamber and it's able to tell that by the CAD cell reading coming from right here. These yellow wires come through right through this box down here and over to the F and the F terminals. So it should have a very, very high resistance reading indicating that there is no light. When there is light, it'll have a lower resistance reading and I'll go over those values here shortly. The other thing is it has to have a signal to turn on. So the TT terminals. So once these two wires connect right here, then this oil burner is going to go ahead and, and light. So how the primary control works is it has some power wires So your white and black right here, that's your power to the primary control. Your orange is the output. So when it's sending a signal for this oil burner to light, it's sending 120 volts over to this transformer right here. This is an electronic transformer, and it's going to put 20,000 volts right onto these two rods. And in the front up here is where it's going to ignite the oil. So that's one of the wires. So you're sending 120 volts to the transformer, and this could be you know, an electronic transformer or just a standard transformer. It's also sending 120 volts to the motor. So it's turning that on, and when it does that, it's going to be pumping and also sucking the air in and blowing it forward. So that's for combustion. And the third thing it's powering is this solenoid right here. So this is going to uh, stop the, the oil flow on the pump when the, the power is no longer there. Traditionally on the older pump assemblies, you didn't have the solenoid. And what that meant was that on the primary control, when the connection between the T and the T terminals opened up, then the primary control no longer sent voltage to the motor and to the transformer but the motor is still free spinning, which means that the pump is still spinning and you're still pumping oil through the nozzle and into the heat exchanger. The issue is, since you're not powering the transformer, you're no longer sending the spark by the nozzle and you're not igniting that oil. So you're just spewing the oil into the heat exchanger area. So now that you have this solenoid, it's stopping the oil flow when you lose your 120 volts at the solenoid when the T and T terminals open up. Now that I briefly described the operation of the oil burner, I want to cover the CAD cell, how it works, and also the troubleshooting first. Then I'm going to cover the oil primary control. And the reason for that is, is that the CAD cell, these yellow wires are getting connected into the primary control and are going to control what's happening within the oil primary control. So I have my multimeter set on resistance and I'm measuring the resistance value of this CAD cell. And you see that I have it disconnected from the oil primary control because I don't want to accidentally be reading anything from a control board inside of this primary control. So I just have one alligator clip on the connection here. This other wire going to the CAD cell is disconnected and it's over here and I have my alligator clip on that. Right now we happen to be reading a resistance value of about 480 ohms. But that's just because I have this CAD cell exposed to light, and you can see that that resistance value is changing depending on the position of that. Now, this my resistance reading right now doesn't really matter. It matters when this, this is shut. So now that these tabs are down, I still want to tighten these two connections because I want to make sure that there's absolutely no light getting in here in order to take my reading. So right now you see that I'm in mega ohms. It says 2.1 mega ohms of resistance. So right now you should have some type of mega ohm resistance. And if you had anything right about 1600 ohms or lower, then this primary control is not going to send voltage to the motor, to the transformer, and to the solenoid. So it's not going to turn on if we have a resistance value on the F and the F terminals from the CAD cell of below 1600 ohms. Right now, obviously we're disconnected, but that's a good reading. And if we read OL, then maybe the multimeter is off or maybe the actual CAD cell 
itself is, is opened up on the inside. You also don't want to have something like 0, 0.0 ohms. That's definitely bad. It should definitely change with the amount of light that it sees. I'm going to be doing a test now and I'm getting ready to turn the power on. So I want to make sure my TT terminals are connected. And this wheel primary control should be able to turn on even with this wire off because it's such a high resistance reading. It's as if they're not touching right here. So whether this is connected or not, it's still going to turn on, but it's only going to turn on for a period of time, a very short period of time, because this control wants to see the resistance value lower below 1600 ohms. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply 120 volts as the input power to this control. So right now you can see that it's reading 1.1 kilo ohms so 1100 kilo ohms while it's running and you see that this wire is not connected right now and so what's going to happen is this is only going to run for a short period of time and then it's going to shut off and the reason for that is is because the oil primary control is not seeing a resistance value lowering on those two terminals so now you see the reset button has popped up and it's no longer operating so you know I have a controlled setup right here for just doing testing on. I'm not actually squirting oil up against this wall or anything like that. This would not work when it's pulled out of an oil fire furnace or boiler because it's going to see a lot of light in the end. So I have that covered and when I'm powering, I'm, I'm then powering a light over in the front. And that's how I'm able to get this as a, as a testing setup right here. But anyway, what happens is you should have a resistance value on the CAD cell even lower than 1100 ohms. You should be down between say 300 and 1000 ohms and that would indicate that you have a good flame. If it's higher than that, you may not have a good flame or maybe the, the CAD cell is dirty or something like that. Uh, but you want to have anywhere below 1600 ohms in order for this primary control to sense that you have a good flame. Once again, if you have something between 300 and 1,000 ohms, that's, that's better for the flame. Now, if you want to read your resistance on the CAD cell while the burner is in full operation, then what you could do is you put an alligator clip on the one F terminal, and you get ready to put the other one on the second F terminal after the burner turns on. So if I press this red button as the reset, I can then have this burner start up and then go ahead and place this other alligator clip on this terminal and then I can just go ahead and read my resistance value on the CAD cell and this should not shut off on me. And that's because we have a low resistance value across the F and the F terminals if you have it jumped out with alligator clips. You can press this reset button down regardless of whether you have incoming power or not. And also this lever right here will pop it back up into the reset position. So right now, if it does not have any power coming in, it's not going to allow the primary control to operate. During normal operation, if this keeps popping up on you, you want to make sure to not just keep pressing it down because it's signaling that there's a problem here. So a big problem is maybe that the oil is just not getting ignited and the, the CAD cell is not seeing any type of flame. So if you just keep pr pressing this down, you're squirting oil into the heat exchanger and it's not being ignited. So you're going to have a puddling of oil in the heat exchanger. And that's going to be a problem when you do go and finally fix the issue. And you have the heat exchanger heating up and then all of a sudden there's a bang in there due to all that oil getting ignited. So you don't want that to happen. So you want to avoid continually pressing this down. You need to start troubleshooting what the problem is. Now we're going to troubleshoot the oil primary control, and this should be fairly easy because we know what the CAD cell resistance reading should be. And we also know that at the TT terminals that it needs to be connected in order for the primary control to send voltage to the transformer, the motor, and the solenoid. So what we're going to do is we'll take this off, and right now we have the power off, by the way. And you see this orange wire? That's the output wire. This is the 120 volts into the primary control and the common for the primary control. And this orange is 120 volts out. So remember that this orange is sending 120 volts to these three wires, the motor, the transformer, and the solenoid. So what we need to do is we're gonna take an output reading on this right here. Just gotta position this, so there we go. We'll put our alligator clip on there. 
and then we're just going to read on the ground for now. And we're going to be able to read 120 volts coming out if there's no problem. So we want to make sure that these terminals, that there's no terminals that are touching a, the ground frame or anything like that. And right now there is none. But you can hold this up in the air, push it to the side. But I'm just kind of setting this here for the sake of the camera and so that you can see the, the multimeter. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. And you see that we're reading 122 volts. Now, you also may have a problem just due to light right in here, maybe getting to the CAD cell and not allowing the primary control to turn on. If that's the case, what you can do is you can just disconnect your wires to the CAD cell at the F and F terminals while you're doing this test. But right now you see that it's reading 122 volts. So that oil primary control is good. If you're looking for another video on the oil burner and checking the transformer and making sure you have spark between the electrodes and adjusting the electrodes, I have a video on that down in the description section below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.